Lady Charmaine, and my guest today is a highly sought after international speaker, lifestyle designer, and author of the books, Direction to Destiny, On the Road to Love, and The Designer Life. She knows that all things are possible and passionately believes that everyone should discover their own unique gifts, talents, and purpose. She has been told countless times that she makes the truth so plain, you cannot ignore it. I want you to help me welcome Miss Stacy Speller to the show. How are you doing, Stacy? And welcome to the show. Have me today. Oh, you are so welcome. And I, I was reading your bio, and the one thing I love that you use that so differently, it's called the designer lifestyle. Tell us a little bit about that and what does that entail? Well, the designer life actually came to me several years ago um, when I was kind of taking stock in my own life. And it occurred to me that God has designed a life for us. It's clearly spelled out in his word, but are we really living that life? Mm. And it just came to me that if we don't design our lives, then somebody else probably will just by default. And is that what God has for us? And so that's pretty much where it comes from, just kind of living the design of life as God intended for you to have. Okay, that's good because I like that of lifestyle designer. So let me help you get your life together and how God and I like how you incorporate the Lord in there because God, he has a lifestyle that he wants us to live. And it's good that he has people like yourself that can help us get that together. Also, what is your primary message that you are trying to communicate to the world as an international speaker? Well, Basically, Lady Charmaine, I try to, you know, as I have had the, the absolute enormous pleasure of pretty much traveling the world, um, I've noticed that there are patterns that pretty much cross all different cultures. And one of those things is living as Christians, living beneath the promise. Hmm. And the Word does not give us any of the things that we readily embrace, that, you know, worry is not our portion, that's clear in the Word. You know, lack is not our portion, unhealthy relationships, and yet we just seem to accept that this is just the way it is, it's the way it's always been. And so it occurred to me that we really have to start saying, you know what, there are people that are not even of the kingdom who embrace kingdom principles and are having great success. And the children of God who just accept things and accept life as it is, I always tell people that designer life is more about when you've decided you don't want to let life happen to you and you want to make life happen for you and start commanding the promises that are yours into your life. And I really want people to recognize that, you know, the God of all high is not for somebody else. He's for you. And what Mm -hmm. the Word says is for you. Most of us read the Word. We don't doubt God ability to do it. Most of us do it and we read the word and we doubt his willingness to do it for us. That is really good. And I I love this book that I've been reading and I read it every day and I read it to my children and it's called Commanding Your Morning. And when you talk about commanding Mm. the blessings that God have for us and and it's so many prayers in there. My kids every morning when I'm done praying, they be like, whoo, mommy, you trying to read the whole book. No, I'm just putting every blessing of God (laughs) on your life. (laughs) Because I do. I need literally about 15 to 20 minutes just to pray all those prayers over my children. But I'm going to watch God bring all those to pass. So that is so true. Reminding people to command the blessings that God have on your life. You also wrote two books. And I want to know what is the inspiration behind your books? You have uh, Directions to Destiny and The Designer Life. Tell us about your books. Well, Directions to Destiny, I wrote actually, I wrote it with the intent for women, although... I can't tell you how many men have told me it was insightful and how much they appreciated the book. But I had so many um, women who I would interact with, I was speaking or just out and about or in my sorority life, just everywhere, who put so much emphasis on finding the right person for their life partner Mm -hmm. that they had almost lost sight of who they were and who God wanted them to be. And so the book was really kind of like, let's take a step back, ladies, whether you're married or single, and let's get focused on loving God and loving yourself first, because you can't give what you don't have, Mm -hmm. and you attract as you are. So if you're just a wreck and a mess and you're not in tune with God and you're not designing your life and, and you're not where you're supposed to be, what are you going to attract? And so that was the impetus behind 
directions to destiny because people said, share, share what you're thinking, and that was directions to destiny. The designer life was written because I would do seminars, and I was over in Africa, and I was speaking and ministering, and what happens is, even if you do a two-day, or I'm sorry, a two-hour or three-hour seminar, People can walk out of there thinking that the process is a microwave situation, Mm -hmm. that, okay, I just spent two hours, three hours, now everything is supposed to be lined up. And you just don't have enough time in a seminar to be transparent and to show that it's a process. And so the book was to say, you know what, I've had tragedies, I've had triumphs, I'll, I'll share them very transparently so that you can see it's a process and recognize that you don't microwave your purpose, you slow cook it, <laughs> and that's what makes it come out just right. I like that. You don't microwave it, but slow cook it. Because we are now in a microwave society. I remember back in the day when there was no microwaves and you had to put everything in the oven <laughs> if you wanted to reheat it back up, you know, get the little tin pans and whatever you needed. And now it's like if you put something in the microwave for five minutes, that's taking too long. And we have truly become a microwave society, and I'm glad you got back to the slow cooking. Now, you mentioned about being in Africa. Tell us your process of how you ended up going over to Africa to teach and to minister. Well, I will tell you, Lady Charmaine, that was nothing but God. And, you know, I I tell people all the time that your your greatest experiences are waiting to meet you at your point of obedience. Mm. And... I had gone to a church to visit. My husband and I had gone to visit at a church, and my husband had always said that he wanted to be a blessing in Africa and do things in Africa. So we're at this church visiting. Long story short, he gets a prophecy. It's about a 1,000 people in the room. He gets a prophecy about going to Africa. So when we were leaving the church, they were signing people up to go to Africa for a conference. So I did what any good wife would do. I signed him up to go. <laughs> and... As we were riding home, it was like the Holy Spirit was just saying, no, you're supposed to go, Stacy." And it was kind of like, God, now I said you could use me, but please, not in Africa. <laughs> but I just felt so strong that I was supposed to be the one to go. So I actually, I said, you know what, I don't want to go to Africa. I'm somewhat, you know, uh, nervous at the idea of going that far alone, but I'll do it. Because with the South Africa, it's an 18 and a half hour flight from Atlanta. Mm. And... I said, I'm going, and I did, and I met incredible people over there, and it basically changed my life. I met a gentleman by the name of Dr. David Malapo, who was like the Dr. Phil of South Africa. Um, I met an ambassador, and they actually connected me with Dr. John C. Maxwell, who's an American, but he was doing conferences over there. And then I had the opportunity to work with Dr. Maxwell, and that's what's kind of kept me in Africa for the last three and a half years. So just obedience is really how I ended up having the awesome privilege of being able to travel the continent. And see, that's beautiful when you're just in obedience. Like you said, then you ended up having the opportunity to work with uh, Dr. Uh, John Maxwell. Now you're back. You have your own books. And you also talk about, you say that unhealthy lifestyles hinder the manifestation of the spiritual gifts and God, the talents that God give us. Why is that so important to you? Well, you know, I just... I truly believe that when you have, we have so much to accomplish for the kingdom and that when your health is not in order, it's a hindrance to you. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Sir John said, good health, be in good health so your affairs prosper. Mm-hmm. And, you know, First Thessalonians says, the God who makes everything holy and whole put you together, spirit, soul, and body. Um, And so I just think it's very important that we recognize that we are the temple of God. We are the living embodiment of the temple of God. And it's our responsibility to take care of it because what we put in into it is what we're going to get out of it. And we need to cherish it and take good care of it so that we can be the most effective that we need to be for all that he has for us to do. I mean, if you're sick and unhealthy and you're not taking good care of yourself, how on earth can you pour out and be a blessing and be a light? to the world. Mm-hmm. And you also talk about um, major obstacles that help prevent individuals from reaching the destiny that God has for them. What are some of those obstacles? Well, I think there are several, Lady Charmaine. I think, you know, one of the obstacles, again, is 
the trust factor, you know, because obedience is rooted in trust. If we believed and trusted God for what he really says, we would do what he told us to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you really stop and think, okay, why am I not doing what God gave me to do? It's usually because you don't trust him enough and you trust opinions, you trust the situation. You know, I, I tell people sometimes, tell your situation to stop lying on you. <laughs> um, and we we really don't trust what he has said and take him at his word. And that can be such a huge hindrance. We also sometimes don't feel worthy, like, okay, he'll do what he says in his word and he'll bless people, but he probably won't bless me. Because sometimes I don't think we really grasp just how much God loves us and how much he wants his absolute best for us. You know, it almost becomes, uh, we say it by remote, you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But how much do we really take that in and factor in, you know, those of us who are parents, you know, to think of sacrificing your only son because you have that much love. Um, and so I think those are, you know, what I call the destiny destroyers because you don't grasp those concepts. And the further we have gone in our Christian walk, and we've gotten so deep that sometimes we've forgotten the depth of what it really all means, and we can kind of get lost and miss the true heart of the gospel and what what we're promised. And that is so true. And one thing I like about your book, because I was was looking at your Designer Life book, and you have in there, um, things do not change, we change. Can you kind of explain that a little bit? That's chapter one. Things do not change, we change. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, it typically, it's, when, I, when I talk about that, I speak to it from a place of perspective. And oftentimes we're sitting and waiting for the right situation, and we're waiting for the change in our situation. We're waiting for the change in other people. And it's really all about changing ourselves because that's all that we really can take on is changing ourselves. You know, we have situations, you know, there's four different types of change that I discuss, and and there's a change that, you know, happens to you, change that happens for you, you know, change that you can't impact, up impact. You know, things happen in the world. Life happens, and you can't change that. Mm-hmm. But you can change your perspective on it, and you can change how you respond to it. You know, oftentimes what we receive is not necessarily the response we need to give back. And so I really try and get people to understand that, you know, the change has to happen with you first and foremost. Amen. Now, do you have any new and exciting things that's happening in your life right now in your ministry that you can tell us about? Well, I mean, you know, every, I tell you, Lady Sharma, mean, every day feels like a new and exciting day. I mean, I, I actually get up and I say, okay, God, I can't wait to see what blessings you have for me today. Okay. Um, and so I go, you know, I, I pretty much live in expectancy because I often tell people you, you will never get what you deserve, but you'll always get what you expect. I know that's right. And Amen. I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> and I just put that on Facebook. I put that on Facebook on, uh, I think it was on Thursday because basically, um, if you basically, I put up there, if you expect nothing, you will get exactly what you expect. Nothing. Yeah. It would, it yes. would never yes. let you and down. <laughs> we get, yes, it, it won't. And oftentimes we're so frustrated in life because we say, you know, um, I can't believe this is happening and this is happening, and we are so full of negative confession. And it's like, okay, don't be upset when these things come into your life because, you know, this is just a delivery method of what you ordered. Mm-hmm. And when you're full of negative confession, what do you think is going to come in? I mean, you're just going to, you know, you're inviting it in. So, you know, I I, I think everything is new and exciting. Um, I'm I'm excited to be back in America with everything and all the experiences that I've had in Africa. I mean, I am truly so much richer for the experience. I mean, in fact, I said my next book is going to be about uh, the faith that I found in Africa because it, my experience and my time in Africa has elevated my faith to a level that I didn't even, you know, I didn't even know was possible. And I thought I was operating, even I was beneath the promise because I had not had some of the experiences that I've had. And now, so that's very exciting now to be able to come back and share some of that. Now, Stacey, being a person that was in America, 
worshiping here and you know how we worship, then going over to Africa, because I hear that the worship is so different than it is in America. How different was it for you to experience that type of worship? Is it a difference from the way we worship as Americans and as they worship in Africa? Oh, my goodness. It's tremendous. In fact, I laugh. I have uh, video clips of some of the worship services in Africa, but I tell my friends, I said, you know, there's nothing that prepares you for that level of worship and that intensity. I mean, I see, I mean, even just coming to a conference, a church conference, you'll see people who have walked, walked five, seven miles to get there. And, you know, there's a lot of the churches, there's no air conditioning, so it's hot. And, you know, there's no time constraints. I mean, I've I've been in churches where, you know, the people arrive maybe at 3 o'clock that afternoon and, you know, it's 10 o'clock and they're still going strong. Um, I, I once asked someone, I said, you know, I said, the worship here is so intense. I said, I, you know, I wonder what that is. And I had a pastor tell me, he said, well, he said, in America, you all are so spoiled. He said, because you have everything, and we have nothing. And so when you have to trust God for all that you have, then worship goes from being a theory to being very practical and very real. So the praise is very real. It's very high. The first time I was in an actual large, very large church service, I was sitting in the second row, and I was on the aisle. And they did an altar call, and they wanted people to come to the altar. So I was going to go up to the altar, and I was going with my polite American self, you know, just kind of stepping out in my heels, ready to just kind of tip to the altar. I almost got ran over like a stampede was coming. (laughs) They were so hungry, and I was like, okay. (laughs) So it (laughs) completely... It's completely different, um, but it's interesting you ask that because I actually find now when I'm in America in church, I miss it. Mm-hmm. I really miss it. Like I, even the most lively, you know, Holy Ghost on fire churches here don't even come close. Wow. So you were walking up to the altar like you were good and full and everybody else was starving. <laughs> so, that, starving. That's, that's what they said. Like hungry, hungry hungry to get their blessing and I you know I'm just being you know the polite little American and I'm like okay I'm about to get run over heels and all I'm about to tip over <laughs> see now that's funny you know because I, I always hear the experiences are so different so that's why I wanted to ask you that question if people wanted to purchase your books either one of your books where can they go to purchase your books uh, they can go to the website which is uh, com, which is Stacy is spelled S-T-A-C-E-Y Speak to Stacy.com and get your books. If they want to follow you on Facebook or Twitter, can you give us your social media sites? Yes, I'm on Facebook as Stacy Speller, S T A C E Y, and then S T E L L E R. And on Twitter, I'm at Speak to Stacy, and it's S T E A K T O S T A C E Y. And I will tell you that Twitter has become a new guilty obsession. I just recently got on Twitter because I wasn't really into the whole social media thing. I like to interact with actual people. Um, And so I really was resistant. And I got on at the end of the year when I came back from Africa. And I just love it. (laughs) Now I'm on their own. (laughs) That's what you are. I'm sitting here wherever I Whenever I get a free minute, I pull out my phone and I get on Twitter. So you're a true Twitterer. And I I used to go, (laughs) it was so funny because a lot of people that's been on my show before I really got into Twitter, I'm still really trying to get into Twitter, y'all. But they will always tell me, they would give me tips. And I'm like, there's so many social media sites to keep up with. Are you Facebook? And you got LinkedIn. And I'm like, oh my God, how do you do it? But I guess I have to really get into that obsession too. Now, do you you tweet good things out or do you tweet what you're eating? Do you tweet what you're doing? How do you tweet? (laughs) No, I don't. No, 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 no. Because I figured nobody, nobody really wants to know what I'm eating um, to that, you know, to that magnitude. Because what I'm eating is usually not that interesting. Okay. I tend to tweet in real time. Um, I, you know, I tweet, you know, inspirational messages. You know, if if a particular word comes in my spirit, I'll tweet that. Um, I, I guess I'm what I call like a real, real time tweeter. I'm a serious sports fanatic, so if I'm watching the game, I'm tweeting commentary about the game. Um, 
do pretty much life things. Um, or if somebody, if I, if somebody interacts with me and they start asking questions, like I get a lot of women who will come to me and ask me questions and want to know what I'm thinking. And so I will tweet my response. Of course, I never say, you know, who came to me, but I will just tweet my response in general because what I have found is if one woman or one person comes to me with it, there's thousands more with the same challenges, Mm -hmm. and this can bless somebody else. That's a blessing. Well, Stacey, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. It was a pleasure having you. I want to remind everyone to make sure that you go to speak to Stacy.com if you want to get her books, find out more information about her, even if she may be in your city speaking. She's an awesome motivational speaker and author, and she is a lifestyle designer. Love that. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure, Lady Charmaine. I really appreciate it. You're welcome.